Hello and welcome back to Alpha Software's DevCon 2022. I'm pleased to be joined by Alpha expert Glenn Schild, who will be going over from PO to Goods In. Uh, it's an application that he has built, and I think you'll find it enjoyable. Uh, many of you have seen Glenn present. Uh, I think he's done a few sessions, maybe even the course of this year. He's certainly been at other DevCons, and I think you're going to enjoy what he has to show. So how's it going there, Glenn? All good, thanks. I do have a bit of a cough myself, but as I'm not in Rhode Island, you that conspiracy theory has gone out the window. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to Rhode Island, though? Is that that's uh, a... yeah? A long yes, time you ago. have yeah. been. Yeah, exactly. I think I recall not that. So. Okay, that's that's fair. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter. I'm going to drop off of camera here. Click that button and this button, and I'll let you know when I can see your screen. Bear with me one second. Sure. Uh, I'm seeing a very wide screen. Yeah, I've got to change this. So we did. We should have checked this. <laughs> I need to. I need to show a, a part of the screen. Okay. Which on a normal go to webinar is fine, but it doesn't seem to be an option on here. Hmm. Hold on. Here it is. Hang on. Got it. Hang All on. right. Right. Hopefully you'll see my screen now. Fantastic. Yep, I see you're you have slide one of uh, I can't read the bottom there, but one of eight or something. Eight. Like yep. It's not, it's not death by PowerPoint. Don't worry. <laughs> Hi everybody. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, okay, so I've been asked to showcase and demo one of my applications or a part of one of my applications, and it's relating to uh, purchase orders through to goods in for a company, uh, an engineering company that uh, is one of my clients. So if I work into this now, if this technology works for me. Right, so the application itself is an end-to-end -end admin system designed to handle everything from initial inquiries coming in through to the final invoice and, and all parts in between. It's not quite an ERP, but it's sort of getting there. So the company themselves, uh, they make things out of metal. Now, that does, do them a little bit of an injustice because they make things for the rail industry and for power stations, including nuclear. So a lot of what they do is actually safety critical. So there's a requirement to make sure there's traceability for all the materials that they use across uh, the things that they make. The company itself is called CWE, Coral Wharf Engineers. They're about 200 miles north of me where I am in, in the West Country in, in the UK. In England and that they are focusing on transforming rail performance. So the, the core workflow, this is not the whole workflow, it's just to condense, is that inquiries will come in from their clients and their customers and often that would include detailed drawings and specifications about what they want to have built. They will then break that apart, figure out what materials are going to be needed, they will figure out through the processes they need to do, and they'll figure out the order in which they've got to build things. They'll put together a quote, quote goes back to the customer, the customer says yes. Uh, they will then assemble the uh, building to the system, the parts, the assemblies, the sub-assemblies, and the root cards, which is a step-by-step step, step step process for what they've got to do to build and, and spit out whatever it is they've got to make. They then goes into what's called a contract review, where another member of staff there, one of the management team will go through it and basically make sure that when they've costed it out, they haven't forgotten anything, they haven't missed anything. And it's pretty crucial that they go through that process so they avoid having any issues with cost overruns because they forgot to build something in. And once they've done that and it's been reviewed, they then push all the materials needed for that job into what we've called a bucket list. Once it's in that bucket list and the purchasers within the company then will process the items in there and they'll generate the purchase orders as needed. Those orders go off to their suppliers. When the goods come in and receive their process into the system, once they're in, they make what they've got to make, push it out the door, get it to the, get it to the customer and then send out their invoice. What I've used on here is Alpha Transform. Alpha Anywhere is the center. Of, of the, the thing. Alpha transport is used with the goods in part of it, which I'll demo in a minute. 
we're in the process of migrating this to Alpha Cloud. It's one of the last remaining ones I've got that isn't on the cloud. And there's, there's been a few things I have to clean up and adjust in this system because it's been around for a few years now. But that's imminently going across onto cloud. We use a SQL Server backend database and I use Navicat, the Navicat to manage and, and build and maintain all the, the database behind the scenes. Okay, so I'm now going to dive into the demo. So because we're in the process of navigating to, to the cloud, I'm on the live system here now. I haven't got the demo system available in a shape where I can um, where I can use it. Um, so we're on the live system, but if I just log into it. And when I'm in the system, you'll see it's using the tab GUI interface at the minute. And if I go down to purchase orders, the first thing you see on here is the bucket list, which is the one I refer to where all the parts get pushed into. In fact, let me go back one step a minute and go to the contract reviews. Because the contract reviews, once everything is in the review, they will go into here and the management will then go through the review. And they have these questions that they've got to go through, all the assessments, any specific actions, component parts, health and safety, any other information. So once it's signed off by the member of staff, they're allowed to do it. They will use this icon to push it into, into the purchase order module, into the bucket list. So once the contract review is completed, it will then end up in the bucket list. Now the bucket list is a concept where they don't just do one job a day. They have lots of jobs coming in. They could be anything from a foot plate up to a full pop or anything in between. So there could be some different sizes of jobs they do. But in here, all the items in here on the left hand side are the items they're going to be that they have to deal with. They have to either order in or whatever else they have to do. But if I just go so on the right hand side at the top, there's a list of all the suppliers and they can break down by the type of supplier they are. They can search for them. Um, you can see here on this one, there's a supplier here that's, that probably isn't on, now it's come off screen, but that pop-up says that's safety critical approved. So that supplier, they can get materials from which, uh, which will be compliant for the safety crit critical aspect of their work. If I just go and do a search on here in a minute. So on this one, you can see one on here now, which has got, so this is something they've got to go and order in. Uh, they've got 16 in stock. They've got no outstanding inquiries. They've actually got available 38, but there's unallocated orders on here. But the important thing here is because there is stock, they can allocate straight from stock. So they can fulfill this one just by clicking that button and that will, that will allocate uh, the, the number on here needed for that particular job. And, or they can allocate it from the orders that are already coming in. They can, if, if it's appropriate to make it from another part, they can do that or they can just remove it from the bucket. They have the ability over here is to select one or more suppliers. And the first thing they can do, they can view the supplier details. And you can see if I click on here, you can see that these are the suppliers they've used for this particular thing in the past. So they've got a history here. But also they can then do a purchase inquiry. So they rec request a price from the supplier. Um, or they can then actually just push it straight into a purchase order. Um, I know for a fact today they've done about 15 uh, purchase inquiries today, gone off to different suppliers for, for best prices. Uh, there's about half a dozen, six or so uh, POs that have gone out through the draw as well. But if they click on the uh, add item to a PO, what that will then do is it will look for an open purchase order for this supplier. I know there's a purchase order which is in the process of being built but hasn't yet been submitted to the supplier. If there is one, it will add this to that PO. If there isn't an open PO, it will then go and create it and then add one to the to the PO. So if I go now, I'm not going to go into the pre-order inquiries, but if I go into the purchase order list, and I'm going to pick one. I have one prepared earlier and then they went and processed it, so I couldn't really do anything about it. But this one hopefully is still there. So have a look for the purchase order. And this particular one here, you see it's been sent and it's required by uh, beginning of next week. So if I go into the actions on here, I can then open up that PO. And how we built this is that um, 
the idea, the logic behind this is so that they've got multiple orders or multiple things need to be um, purchased at any one time. They will um, try and get economies of scale. So if, if they would just go off each time and say, right, I want one of these to this one and then do another purchase order to the same supplier for another one then they're not going to take advantage of any discounts they might get for, for quantity. So the idea behind this one, you can see on here there are five items that have been pushed into this one and two of them are the same product. And as it happens, they're for the same job, then it could be different parts of the assembly, which is why it's in separate, but it could be different jobs. So what they don't want to do is send over a PO that's got five line items on it where two are the same for each for five. So the process they go through is when they're ready to push this out to the supplier, we've got an output tab, and then we amalgamate the items. So clicking that button then will amalgamate. So you can see this one here now has been amalgamated into one line of 10 items. And then once they've done that, you can print it out and they can email it. And if I've got a printout, a PDF copy, so this particular PO that went out, you can see on here the way the PO goes out, it's 10, it's clearly saying uh, what it is and you can see here it does actually list the, the job numbers for the jobs that that order is on but also if I go back onto the order items and click on one of these you can see there is actually a drawing link to that so if I open that up now that order so that is a detailed plan for whatever this thing is um, I'm not an engineer, um, so but whatever that is, that that PDF. So when they actually go to to send this out and email it, any documents, any drawers in here go out, go off as attachments to the email, so that the supplier has got all the details and the specs they need for whatever it is they're producing. Once it goes off, it then marks it as sent, and so therefore the job's done now it's been emailed off it's been sent off now that particular order now they wait for the goods to come in so that's the first stage of this is getting the purchase orders and managing the materials that they need across all the jobs they're doing pushing them out to the to the suppliers the next stage of that of course is when the goods come in now if i go back to uh there at the very bottom of the purchase order, it does say that that reference has to appear on all related correspondence papers and invoices. So if that's not on there, so when the goods come in, if, if the documents don't contain that number, they reject them because you know, they need to know what it is. And that is quite critical when it comes to the next part. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna jump on to my iPad, which has got uh, running um, with uh, the system set up, how they're using it. So their goods in yard, where they come in, all the stuff will come in. Um, the the manager of the goods in yards, or who's in charge of it at the time, would have would have the tablet there, and they can then go and do it. So what they do is they have another blank form, which is built in transform. Because I'm on here, my permissions, I get to see everything, but it's a goods in form there. So the first thing that happens then, at the minute, because this is still being trialled, who are you? So if I say it's me, it's already put the process dates. It's assuming because I'm stood there now with this tablet that I'm actually doing it now. So that's that's critical. So then we have the option for purchase order or free issue. I can cover a free issue later if you want, but purchase order is the one we want here. So I'm going to say that I have to put the purchase order number in. So if I go to six, seven, nine, eight, two, that's now done an API callback to the server and pulled in the details of the of that PO. So you can see on here it says you know, it's the, the suppliers put in automatically. You need to put in the delivery number. It's a mandatory that whatever the, the delivery note is, you need to put the reference in there. And you then take an image of the paperwork. So you would, they would take a photo, of as many photos as they need, because this can take multi photos of the actual paperwork that they're putting back in. And this is the delivery note, particularly specifically at this point. I'm not going to do that now, but then you can also see what it's done here. It's actually calculated how many open lines there are on that PO. 
how many open items there are. Because it could be that they do get partial deliveries. They might get a partial delivery on a PO and still have stuff outstanding. So this will only return items which have actually still to come in. So if you see they've got four open lines and 21 open items. So I go Glenn, back can to... I interrupt you for a second? It looked like the last screen you're on, just to put it in context, uh, you, were, you were looking at a, like here, I think what you're looking at is a, a web browser, right? But in here, is this a, an iPad or something like that? That's a, that's an iPad. I'm sharing my iPad screen on here. An so iPad using fine. Transform. Wonderful. Okay, wonderful. So that's yeah. the other that's the other part of it. You said at the beginning you were using Transform and Alpha anywhere, and I just wanted to say. So this is it here. Yeah, this is the Transform form that's Perfect. connected to the system. So as I said here, there's four open lines with 21 items. If you go back into the output tab, you'll see there's four lines, and if you add that, that comes to 21. So it's pulled that in. But when it's all said done dynamically, so it'll, no matter what the, uh, the PO is, if I scroll down here, the goods received, it has now created four entries in the goods received, one for each of those lines. So if I scroll through, you can see there's four of them. So the idea being here is that it does say at the top, please remove any parts that have not been received. So if any one of those items come in, you would delete the others off and just have the one that was there. So the first item on here, which was for the 10, the amalgamated 10. Now, if this was safety critical, there should be a certificate of conformity with this um, shipment in. So if I click yes, you then have the option to take one or more photos of that certificate, however many pages it goes to, and importantly, put the certificate number in. That's merely for quality control and also for traceability on here as well. Then the quantity due, but they may, so when I've owned here, I'm gonna say, yes, we received 10. But actually, I'm only accepting nine because one of them is not right. It's not conforming correctly. So I'm going to accept one. And you see it's automatically rejected the other one there. And then I could put in a stock location based on their lookup list, add notes for the location if I need to. Um, but then a general stock note. And I put a little help option on here. If I tap this help here, you'll see if any items are rejected, please provide details here. So it's just a reminder, a prompt to say, that put a note in here to say why something was rejected. So you would repeat that for each of the ones on here as they come in. If they haven't come in, we just remove the part from here. Once you've done that, you complete the process. It's going to tell me the number of lines because I've still left those other three lines there. It's still thinking there's four lines, but I've only processed nine items. I've tapped to sign it. I would submit it, which I'm not going to do because it's the live system and that would confuse the heck out of them there if I did that at this moment. But the point being is now when I submit that, it will then put this, it would then automatically call a webhook and, it, and that webhook would then process this goods in, mark the goods in, assign them to the jobs as appropriate and and clear out that PO as market is complete if the, all items were now fulfilled properly. In this case, it wouldn't, there'd be one item rejected, so it would leave it open because that rejection would then have to go back to the supplier to be replaced. So if I go back now to here, if I look at the stock, before we had the goods in, transform goods in form, the deliveries in, would be done through here. So that would mean they would have to go back into, out of the yard, back in, and then come into uh, into here and then process it. They would add it in here. They would go through, you can see here, there's one here. If I click on that, you can see it's assigned to the two different jobs. There was two items come in, uh, both accepted, and they assign one each to each job uh, in the stock records. The finally on that, the stock movements, uh, so for every time something comes in, if you look at here, these are the movements from today. There's a stock table which has a single record which matches. So each time a PO line item comes in. So on here, all those five items come in, there would ultimately there would be five records in the stock record table, one for each. And the reason for that is because it's explicitly linking the job to this. And also, by the way, they could have also added extra extra orders on there, extra quantity, which are then just going to go into stock that are not specifically assigned to a job and they would hold those in stock. And that would have held you no. Know, so if they set that would be another line item on here without a job number. 
that each each line item in the PO then would end up becoming a, a line in the stock records. So we've got the traceability that we can link that that stock record to the PO line item, to the PO, to the certificate, and we've got that traceability back if it's ever needed. So if the supplier came back and said the batch we gave on certificate number were faulty, you need to we need to recall that and redo it, then they can figure out exactly where that material was used. So back on the stock movements, the stock movement record then is the transactional records behind that. So for example, here, you can see that there was open stock uh, came in and uh, it was taken out and it was put into a stock record for this job. And it was taken out of uh, a stock record, not signed to a job. Um, so it was allocated to a job. So open stock that they had was taken out of this A stock record, moved into here. So these stock movement records then give a complete audit trail of where, how that stock has moved around the system. Final thing on here is the stock management where they have the ability to, within the system, uh, manage certain stock so they do have refurbishment stuff they do as well where they will keep stock and they've got the ability here now for managed stock which is what that indicates to see what's available creating new, uh, see what's in POs already and if it hits an order buffer they can then you know push it into the bucket to go and get more stock in to maintain their levels so they've got a monitoring system to manage the stock that they need to have and they also do have a sub items they use a Kanban system for and they can mark parts for that as well. So that's in 20 minutes a whistle stop tour of um, from PO to goods in managing the stock. Um, I've just got to open it up now for questions. That is really cool. Thanks Glenn. Do we have questions for Glenn? Someone must have something. I don't have anything. Oh, wait a minute. One question, and it has to do with the design <laughs> of your app that comes in every time. <laughs> are you using so, so? What are you doing over there on the left? Are you using built-in alpha um, styling for um, this, or, or or how did you build out those menu bars on the left? Right. This is. Uh, I'll show that because uh -huh. what I didn't show was the fact that, and I should have shown. I was remiss to do it rushing through Ooh, and the other thing is someone would like to see the kanban as well so uh, yeah the kanban yeah. is just pretty much it's only there it's not there in what you would call a traditional kanban it's their their way of using the kanban so oh okay if, yeah. yeah but if i go in i'm in here now if i was to uh so i'm in the uh dev what i should have said there's a web service built within alpha which is the one which actually uh is the one for getting the PO data and getting the PO items. Uh -huh. So it's all been built in Alpha, and so this is just sat on the server, waiting yeah. to receive that to return a JSON. And the webhook is also sat on there, and this is the webhook which grabs the, the, the form and then passes it into uh, back into the system, so it populates uh -huh. out those records. So that's the webhook. Right to answer the question, it's a, I said I'm using the tab to at the minute. Mm -hmm. So if I go into the tab UI, which I've really given it a really clever name of home. Very clever. I like it. So you can see I'm using the tree control. Yeah. But then I'm using the expanding menu settings for it. Right. So the expanding menus then, and I'm just setting the custom CSS in there just to give it the color and I wanted to, but it's effectively using the tree control, but by using the configuring the expanding menu options and the feature request I asked a while back for Salmon to do what he did, which is close the sipping branches when a branch is expanded. So that gives you the effect then if I open up one branch, it closes another. So it only ever keeps one branch open. Fantastic. So that's how that's done. So yeah. that's just tree control being used as a menu. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, someone asked, can we see the customer screen and how POs flow from that component? Right, the customer screen. Uh, 
I'm not sure the the, the question. So the purchase yeah, orders. Sure <laughs> I uh, just read them, I, Glenn. <laughs> I think they really they look at the jobs. So the job. Yeah. The, the job itself. So if I go into the jobs and then if I can, in fact, let me find that job. What was it? Uh, let's try six nine seven four two. So the job screen itself is an amalgamation of lots of bits and pieces going on on this screen. It does take a few seconds to load. So they've got the core information about the job here. So you can see the details of the job. Customer information is in here. Delivery and billing and details is in here. Uh, the ability to open the contract review from here. Uh, print the job card, which I'll print that off because that's quite important. So this is what I was referring to the routing. So this is literally saying, um, routine for what they're going to do, set up the machine, do the machining, and it's put in time to do this for this particular job, then set up another machine, do the machining there, there's an inspection, and then additional work related, the materials required and the drawings that are related to it. Now, this is also using the, uh, the transform form for the timesheet management. So these job oh. cards go onto the shop factory floor. So when they're building, they would do these things and they have an app which they can a transform out, they can go into, and they would put this number in and it would bring this up and they would just say how much time they did and whether or not they finished it or not. That then gets pushed into the to the timesheet batches. So it pulls in all the timesheets for the workers that on the shop floor, they're doing it. But the, out of curiosity, what's the QR code used for at the bottom? Right. The, the experiment on here was when we first set up the transform app, mm -hmm. these were all QR codes. But that proved to be really problematical because, you know, if you scan a QR code, the moment it gets anywhere near a QR code, it boom, it takes it. So yeah, the, when you have like two or three QR codes in, in a row, you don't know which one yeah, you're going to get. Like lots yeah. in a row here. Oh, we did do that. We did do the QR code, which is a trial to actually pull up the whole job card into uh, oh, so that's, okay. that's another thing coming up. So, so or to pull the job up rather into uh, onto the tablet there they're looking at. But that's not been developed any further apart from the fact the QR codes on here at the Except minute. that it's there. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. But then across here we've got the notes. We've got the routing. This is where I'm saying where the routing's done. So, in fact, this one is not a good one to show for that. So let me find another job, which is uh, let's clear the filter and go. Uh, in uh, production. Hopefully we'll find one that they've done some work on. Let's go to a random one. No, that looks like it could be okay. No. Let's try that one. So if I go into the routine, hopefully there'll be some here. Yes, there is. So the routine here, so that job card I said, here is the equivalent job card for this one. Mm -hmm. But you can see the timesheet data when it's pulled back in. Now we've got the estimated time, we've got the actual time, we've got a cost in against it. We know the operative who did it and when he did it. And whether they've marked it as complete or not. So we can see as the, as the work progresses through the job, if the timesheets are up to date, then we'll see what's going on. So we can see how far down the job they are because of the timesheets which are all connected back into here. Wow, very cool. Yeah. Uh, we, we have time for one last question and this just has to do with overall design and the question is if you were to do a new project today would you still use the tabbed UI or would you try to roll your own maybe using a UX or something like that? I am now running my own using the UX equivalent. The tab to woe in this environment actually works perfectly fine. There's not uh -huh. necessarily a reason to change it, but right. just because it's available now, I'm using the UX, yes, to roll it. Fantastic. I haven't answered that. Um, that was the last thing. Someone pointed out that customers was the second option in the main menu, but I'm not quite sure what that comment's about. So oh. the customers there is, yeah, so the customer list is ah. a list of customers, yeah. I got so that. Yep. this is all their customers in here and they can go into here um, uh -huh. and the connectivity on here is in fact they can see contacts addresses do all the quotes they've done all the jobs they've done there's oh, a great. 
much on there. Yeah. So yeah, and it's the same for suppliers. They do, and we're rewriting the supplier module at the minute to do it, but it does exactly the same. So they can look at the history with that supplier. We're also building in some analytics so that they can grade each supplier based on you know whether they're actually qualified to do um, the um, uh, quality control, the safety, critical stuff. Right. Also, if they actually hit their lead times and actually deliver on time, their rejection rate, all this sort of stuff, to give them a score so that they, you know, they will then go to the preferred ones who who deliver on time and on quality. Yeah. Well, that is terrific, Glenn. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you showing this off. Thanks everyone else for attending this session. Um, our, we are taking a break now uh, and we will be back at 1.15 Eastern time talking about alpha tips and tricks with another alpha expert, Lee Vasek. Thanks again, Glenn. You're welcome. See you guys soon.